I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today we'll be looking at how to create a doll-like effect in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week. With that, let's look at what we have here. Okay, so I know some people out there may be thinking this is a bit ridiculous. Just take a quick selection of the eye, enlarge it, and be done with it. But today's focus is not just on enlarging eyes and other features, but more importantly, doing so in a way that causes zero pixelation or blurriness. And how do you make something bigger without actually making it bigger? You make everything else around it smaller. So first things first, let's grab our eyes. Using the lasso tool, we are going to copy and paste each eye onto its own layer. You can add a slight feather to the lasso, but it's not necessary. I like to go ahead and grab the eyebrows as well. And don't worry about selecting too much. In fact, too much is better than too little. With the eyes on their own layer, let's just turn them into smart objects. Right click, convert to a smart object. For a little more security, let's also make our original model layer a smart object as well. And finally, let's grab the lips along with the eyes. Again, copy pasting them onto their own layer. You can do this with any body part, uh, by the way, or feature. Ears, hands, even clothes, things like jewelry or bows, sleeves, and collars. This effect isn't exclusive to facial features or doll eye effects. There is a lot of potential and versatility here. But now that we have our facial features, in this case, on their own layers, we are going to grab our original model and shrink her down just a smidge. The amount will depend on how intense or exaggerated you want her enlarged uh, facial features to be. The smaller you make the original subject layer, the larger the extracted layers will look. Once you're happy with the size, we can start readjusting the placement of the cutout features. For eye placement, I like to align the enlarged eyes with the pupils of the original smaller eyes, lowering the opacity of the layer so I can get a real good look at the alignment. With the eyes roughly where we want them to be, we can always make small adjustments as we go. But for now, we can add a layer mask to all feature layers and start blending the edges. So as I said earlier, usually I grab the eyebrows when I extract the eyes. However, it's more so that I have the option to keep them if I did want to. In today's image, I'm going to actually just mask them out and use the smaller eyebrows underneath. And you really want to take your time and pay close attention to your edges, especially when it comes to the eyes. Keep the bridge of the nose in mind as well as the edges of the face. The more intense the effect, the more you'll have to mask and possibly horizontally resize uh, your features to fit, or do a more precise extraction in certain areas. This will especially be the case in images that are not front-facing, um, head-on images. Lastly, feel free to make further adjustments to your eye's size by further shrinking your subject's body if you think the effect isn't quite strong enough. With that all done, we can move on to shaping the features. One thing I love to do is taking the lips and squishing them horizontally just a tad bit. Hold shift while you do this, shortening the lips horizontally, not shrinking them um, proportionally. Then we can also shrink the nose by taking a very large section of the nose and surrounding skin. Uh, just skin, try not to get other features or makeup like blush or anything like that. Not too big a deal if you do, but just keep that in mind. Um, and then copy and paste it onto its own layer and finally shrink the nose down. Adjust the nose placement and then we mask just like we masked the eyes and lips. 
we don't have to mess with the clone brush or anything like that as we are just using the skin we selected to hide the original nose, making sure none of that original nose ends up peeking through. Next, we are going to make her even more doll-like by enlarging her head. Let's take all of our layers thus far and convert them to a smart object. Now, let's take a rough selection of the head and copy paste. And you guessed it, we are going to shrink our new smart object even further. With the subject shrunk, we can readjust and align the head using the subject's shoulders as a kind of guide. Next, I'm going to do a, another little trick I like that is 100% optional. I mean, all of this is optional, I guess, but convert the head into a smart object and then squish it vertically. You probably want to be pretty subtle with this, but that is why we use smart objects. If I go too far, we can always just readjust. We can finish everything off with one last round of masking to the edges of the head layer. Now, a few things to note when using this effect. One, as we are shrinking the original subject image potentially quite a few times throughout the process, even though it's just in small increments, we do end up with a noticeably smaller subject image. So you want your stock image to start already fairly large. The higher the resolution, the better. Two, you want to take your time when figuring out your proportions, placing your new features and blending their edges. Make sure everything makes sense. For instance, in this image, it would be very easy to create inconsistencies in the hair, where the original hair looks disjointed or not connected to the hair coming from the enlarged head. Uh, little things like that. And three, you can use these same techniques to shape single features. So let's say you want to create a more rounded eye. Small, subtle things like that. You don't have to nosedive right into the uncanny valley. I think that about does it for today. So like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Or just say hi down in the comments. I do check them obsessively. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.